Welcome to another video on Sistema Kalochnikova from Transition CRT. Today we will be discussing another principle of the many we have seen earlier. We'll be talking about levers. Levers are quite common in our world. We encounter them in our daily life. The leverage mechanisms will be recognizable in the scissors, for instance, the wheelbarrows and the nutcrackers we use during our daily um, situations. Today I will explain them to you with a certain amount of examples and I will also adapt one of them on a um, artificial combat situation. The first of the levers that I will explain is basically a scissor. When considering a scissor we will have a turning point in the center. Two rigid bodies, both here on the long extents, and by adopting force on the far extents of those two rigid bodies, we'll be able to generate a certain amount of force at the short extent of, in this case, those two sticks replicating a scissor. Same goes for a nutcracker. The turning point is located at the far tip of those two sticks and by providing force on these far two ends imagine there is an object in between I'll be able to squeeze things in a certain with a certain amount of force that I will need to use. I will now discuss the principle of efficiency or return of the force when projected on the lever, so basically this uh, rigid body. The principle is that the amount of force projected on one of the sides will match or be equal to the amount of force returning on the other side. There will be some distinctions though. If we we'll manipulate the lever by creating a short extent on this side and a long far extent on this side, I will be able, when projecting force, to create high speed on this side with a minimal application of force in order to lift an object or a certain amount of mass on the short side, like this. On the other hand, if I will change the situation now and manipulate the lever one more time again, the situation will be a little bit different. Now I will have to project a big amount of force on the short side in order to be able to move the object on the far side or the long side of the liver. The return though will be a higher speed on the long end and a, and a slow speed with a lot of amount of force on the short end like this. When you stand here in front. So one more time again. The rigid body is the arm of Alex. The object that I would like to move basically is Alex himself. By adopting a turning point, in this case my left arm, and projecting force by using my right arm, I will be able to manipulate this lever and by doing so able to move Alex from a certain point from which he is now static. By slowly adopting force and turning I'm able to actually move him towards the ground. Same goes in a situation if I will keep my arm located to the bottom or to the ground. Same goes here. My arm, my left arm is that turning point, my right arm it projects force on the lever and by turning like this I'm able to move Alex towards the ground again. Another last addition, without even using the arm I could use my shoulder or a certain part of my body to create that turning point. For instance using my shoulder and projecting the force one more time again with my right arm I will be able to move Alex 
by controlling and manipulating his arm, which is actually the liver. Here it goes. Thank you very much, Alex. That will be all for the principle of liver. I hope you will find this useful for your daily practices. Uh, make sure to like us or subscribe to our Transition CRT channel. Thank you for your time.